Okay, thanks everybody for coming. I didn't expect this big a crowd. But, um, yeah, so a little, uh, a little context for this. Um, Ken Chan, who is TLO ASIC design manager, established a mentorship thing with uh, CSU. And as part of that, we gave a series of talks. Um, and so the, the, the presentation is more geared toward that for, for people who don't have a lot of exposure to the technology. You know, I mean, us in R&D, we, we work with it all the time. But a lot of people, you know, they, they've seen a scope. They might not know how it works or they don't really know what's going on on the inside. So I was um, asked to do a presentation that kind of initially told what a scope, its, its, its main function, what it's supposed to do. And then ultimately going a little bit deeper, kind of what the front end functions are. Yeah. The front end functions um, inside the scope that actually condition the analog signal before we, we digitize it. And then also before we do things like calculate um, the time for the time axis. So um, basically, what an oscilloscope does, obviously it measures, volt, measures both voltage and time and displays that on an axis as voltage versus time. Now you'll see in a lot of times in our applications and everything, we have other ways to display the signal, but that's, a, that's effectively what we acquire. We acquire voltage and then we um, calculate the time um, that that voltage, you know, the time relative to what that, when that voltage was acquired. So this presentation is going to focus more on uh, the, like I said, the analog signal processing technology before the A to D sees it, and also before the time base and trigger circuitry sees it. Um, so first question, wh why would we want to do that? Well, obviously you look at a board like this. If it's running, you don't really know it's running. Um, I mean, if, if it's powered on or powered off, other than the thing maybe getting hot, or if there are LEDs or something that light up, it really doesn't look any different when it's running versus when it's turned off. So in order for a human to actually figure out and interact with this thing to figure out what it's doing, you need some ability to figure out what's going on in all this circuitry. And that's what oscilloscope does. It basically allows you all the signals on here, they're varying versus time. And in, in order to see what's going on, to either troubleshoot it, verify it, or um, just understand its performance, you need some ability to measure that. And so together with an oscilloscope probe, which we make a ton of those, there's several different uh, versions here. You put that probe down on a trace that seemingly is doing nothing, and then that send, sends a voltage signal back um, through its cable into the front of the scope, and then you're presented on the scope with a waveform. And that waveform in general is displayed versus time. So let's see. So basically, this is the front end. Uh, this is a, a picture of our S-series scope. These go up to 8 gigahertz. We have versions, um, scope families that are in the hundreds of megahertz, tens of megahertz actually now, hundreds of megahertz, tens of gigahertz, and of course now we're, we're, we're um, broaching the 100 gigahertz realm. Um, this, this scope came out, I think, oh, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and I um, was involved in designing the front end ASIC for the preamp assembly. Um, so... Ultimately, um, the main parts of a scope, um, there's the analog uh, channel inputs. These are the um, front end BNCs where the probes hook up to, or even a coax cable can hook up to that. Um, and then there is a, um, in this particular one, this is called a uh, MSO, which stands for Mixed Signal Oscilloscope. We also have 16 digital channel inputs that those can be um, probed and displayed along with the uh, analog voltages, and they're both correlated in time. So it's a pretty powerful um, diagnostic instrument to see what's going on on the, on the PC board. Um, the main controls are um, the analog channel vertical scaling. This is where you set the size of the um, signal that you see on the screen, and also its position in terms of an offset. Um, then there's the horizontal scaling. That's how you set the time axis, the horizontal axis here. We're measuring voltage um, in the amplitude versus time. And so turning that knob compresses the signal. It basically displays more or less time of that signal along the horizontal axis. And then there's a trigger level. Basically, a trigger level is a, a voltage that is used as a reference. And when this waveform passes through that, that, that generates an edge that is used by the time measurement circuitry to figure out exactly 
when that particular point in the waveform you're trying to measure, how that is going to be calculated relative to the timing of the, 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 the system clocks and everything else so you can stably put that waveform on the screen. And I'll talk a little bit more about those blocks um, in a minute. So for those who don't know uh, effectively, you know, haven't used a scope or um, how, it, how it actually works and what the display is actually telling you, um, again, we display volts versus time. And what you're presented um, is with a graticule. The graticule has um, volts on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Um, and it, it's funny that most of the controls, the, the hardware controls that are on the front of the scope are actually there, they, they, they give you the basic functionality of the scope in terms of an analog control to control things like the horizontal axis and the voltage axis. There's a lot of other functionality in the scope, but most of that is accessed through soft keys or there's a couple keys that are on the front of the scope that are kind of universal. You can push that to bring down another set of measurements. So don't think for a minute that just the, the ability or the, the, the functionality of the scope is, is limited to what you can control with the, um, with the hardware knobs. But most of that, in order to get up and running and display waveforms and move the waveforms around, that's what we present in terms of the hardware function, the hardware knobs and buttons. So this, this first set of buttons is the, the vertical. Um, what that's, what that's done, doing is this little guy right here, you can see it's got a, a little waveform and a big waveform. That's pretty much setting the volts per division scale. So right now, for instance, you might see in, in, in a display, it's set to one volt per division. Um, turning that changes that scale. Um, and so now we've got it set to one volt per division. So what that says is that every division here represents one volt for the input signal. Um, the other major control to control the time axis is this horizontal guy. And you can see that that one looks like the same size analog signal except for it's compressed in time. So what that does is control the horizontal divisions, how many seconds or milliseconds or microseconds, now we're in picoseconds, that each one of these divisions is um, relative to the voltages on the screen. Uh, so. so let's assume we applied a two volt peak to peak 100 hertz sine wave and we've got the thing set to one volt per division and one millisecond per division. That's got a 10 millisecond period. So the waveform on screen will look like something that's basically two volts peak to peak. If we want to magnify that signal or effectively cover more of the screen, we'd hit the volts per division, um, change that to a half a volt per division, and it effectively makes the signal look like it's bigger. It's not really a bigger signal at the input. It's just provide, it's just scaling the signal so the downstream A to D converter can actually use more of its range. Um, so if we, if we then move the horizontal, um, so we're actually um, displaying more time on the screen. We went from one millisecond to two milliseconds per division, and, and now we've got 10 milliseconds, so that's two periods of the screen. So those are the two functions in order to get a, get a waveform basically on the screen and initially displayed like you want it to... Uh, want it to appear, those are the two you would look at. There's another one called uh, auto scale here. Um, you know, if you don't really know what your signal looks like, you can push that button and there's all kinds of signal processing to try to figure out to, to, to do initial measurements of this waveform and kind of set this volts per division and um, time per division settings for you. So a lot of times when people are first, you know, making a measurement, they don't really know what they're trying to see. They'll push that button and it'll at least bring a waveform, hopefully stably onto the screen. So it sets the trigger level, it sets the volts per division, the time per division, and maybe even the trigger mode, I think, um, um, whether it's triggering on a rising or falling edge. So there's a, like I said, there's a lot of functionality that's handled in the digital sections of the scope and, and uh, additional hardware that's downstream from the front end. So what's the trigger then? The trigger, like I said, is, a, is, a, is the other main control and that basically, um, as you move that, you'll see a level going up and down. What that is, is it's basically providing the zero time reference for displaying the signal. So whenever, whenever this waveform passes through that level, then that's going to be calculated by the system to put that at time zero. Um, and so the, you know, the other thing, well, you might ask, well, what about when it fall, goes here? Um, there's some slope. There, the, the, the simplest trigger functions are available at the front panel. And so one is the slope here. 
I've set the slope in this particular thing to be this positive edge guy right here. So only the positive edge is the one that generates effectively a trigger signal. And so you'll, you'll see that this guy over here is not at time zero, this guy is. If we would hit that and do the, the uh, negative edge triggering, then this would jump over there and you'd have the, the, the negative slope going through time zero. So um, when you want to change that trigger level, if you move the trigger level up, for instance, what it does is it effectively pushes the waveform to the left because now it's finding this point as time zero. 